Welcome to Many Faces of Dementia 2018. This is our ninth biennial conference, and I'm really pleased to see you all here. Um, and I thank you for your patience with our registration this morning, which was a little chaotic, um, and for uh, coping with us as we try to make things uh, right. Uh, my name is Freddie Siegel Gadan. Um, I'm chair of the planning committee, and I'm with the USC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. Uh, and um, I'm with actually the founder of this conference along with a, a longtime um, conspirator, Grace Far Farwell, who's here today. We started this in, uh, in 1990 with the idea of trying to bring a one-day conference on dementia to Los Angeles to improve care for the older adults who we see. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, on behalf of the USC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, um, the conference planning committee, our partner organizations, and our sponsoring um, uh, organizations. I want to thank you for joining us, and I want to thank them for helping to make this possible. Without their financial con contributions, we couldn't have kept the price of today down as low as we have. Um, this is the only conference for health professionals in the Los Angeles area devoted solely to updates in clinical practice and research on dementia. Uh, we have in attendance today over 200 health professionals working in the Los Angeles area. And it is a unique conference in that this conference involves physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, RNs, LVNs, uh, recreational therapists, marriage and family therapists, psychologists, social workers, um, RCFE administrators, the whole gamut of people who take care of people with dementing illnesses. So I hope that you will take the time today to meet other people um, uh, at your table and uh, at, at other tables so you get to increase your network for working and improving care for patients with Alzheimer's disease and other dementing illnesses. Um, each Many Faces of Dementia conference has a theme and our theme this year is it's not just Alzheimer's. And we are going to focus on the non-Alzheimer's dementias, the atypical dementias that are a challenge for many of us and the families we care for. Uh, we have a great uh, um, faculty today, very esteemed faculty, um, who are going to try to meet the needs of, again, this very um, uh, audience. So for some of you, the information you hear today will hopefully be reinforcing to what you already know about some of these um, non-Alzheimer's atypical dementias. But for others of you, um, this may be a challenge. So bear with us if there's things you don't understand, you need clarification, um, use the time um, for questions and answers, which we hope there will be at the end of each talk to um, get your uh, needs met. But do understand that there's a range of uh, professionals and understanding of these dementias in the room, and so we're trying to meet everybody's needs today. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, provide a little bit of overview and context for today before we move on to our first speaker. So I think I took care of all the housekeeping things. Um, these are the overall course objectives today, which I'm not going to read to you for the meeting in general, and then each speaker has their own objectives, which they have been asked to um, speak towards. So in general, the question I get from patients and families is, do they have dementia or do they have Alzheimer's disease? This seems to be the biggest area of confusion for patients and families and even for some health professionals. And if it's not Alzheimer's disease, does that mean it's not dementia? Um, so this, it takes a lot of time with families and health professionals to understand that dementia is an umbrella term. Um, and there are other uh, terminologies that we need to be clear on. So there's a slippery slope. Uh, in the care and practice of people with cognitive problems that um, is hard to avoid. First, there's the issue of cognitive impairment. Trouble thinking when a person has difficulty remembering, learning new things, concentrating or making decisions. It's a very broad term. Uh, and now that we have the term mild cognitive impairment, which is a pre-dementia condition, it's even gotten more confusing, I think, for people as to what these terminologies mean. Um, dementia um, is a form of cognitive impairment where it's a brain disease that causes long-term and often gradual decreases in the ability to think 
and remember that it's great enough to affect a person's function. And this is the definition most of us have worked with for the, about the last 20 years. Um, it has been supplanted by DSM-5 neurocognitive disorder. Um, people still use the term dementia. I think it's still clinically quite valid, but for many in practice uh, and for billing purposes and actually for epidemiological purposes, it's now gotten more confusing as we talk about neurocognitive disorders, which mild neurocognitive disorder is what we would call mild cognitive impairment, where there's some cognitive impairment but it's not affecting function, and then major neurocognitive disorder, which is the new term for dementia. So keeping up on terminology is important and being clear in our terminology when we speak to one another and we speak to uh, other professionals um, starts to be challenging as the landscape of terminology changes. We know that there is a timeline of cognitive change, that cognitive change is a gradual process in many older adults' lives. Uh, for some people, there's an acute event like a stroke or a head injury that can precipitate a marked cognitive change, but what we're talking about here is um, gradual cognitive change that occurs over many, many years, uh, sometimes takes uh, uh, maybe a, uh, five, six years, seven years to, to manifest itself. Families are not quite sure, is this normal? Even us as clinicians are not sure whether this is normal. So there is normal aging where there's a slowing of responses and may take more time to learn things. Um, but then we know now from basic science research that there's a preclinical phase, at least to Alzheimer's and we believe to many of the other cognitive, cog neurocognitive disorders, where there are silent changes going on in the brain, uh, uh, pathological changes that don't manifest themselves until they reach a certain level that produces clinical symptoms. So there's this preclinical, asymptomatic, silent period that we're learning more about, but raises more questions because we don't really know when it starts and we don't really know what to do in many of the cases. Then there is the beginning of observable cognitive changes, again called mild cognitive impairment, when there is no um, functional change, but either the person themselves is experiencing some changes and they're reporting to us or family and other members are coming to us and saying there's something different here. And that's where the dilemma of is this normal aging or is this the beginning harbinger of some other condition coming on. And then if this progresses, we move into uh, a dementing illness where there's functional change. And then we know from uh, clinical practice, and uh, that's where our clinical practice in the past has started, is at the presentation of clinical symptoms, that then in many cases there is a trajectory of gradual cognitive decline through stages of, of dementia from mild, moderate to severe and end stage death. So we now have this broadened understanding of cognitive health and brain health with aging, but it makes it even more confusing as we're working with families to try to understand what's going on and where people are in the phase of their disease as we uncover the onion and try to understand the different areas of these diseases as they uh, evolve. So again, dementia is this umbrella term, and it is um, nonspecific. It is a syndrome. It is a series of symptoms. It's not a diagnosis. And this is difficult because people often come to us with saying that my loved one has, or I've been told I have, maybe dementia. Uh, well, dementia is just a syndrome. It says that you have cognitive problems that are affecting your function. It doesn't say what's causing it. And there are over 100 types of underlying diseases that cause dementing illnesses. Uh, and so, as I say to the medical students and residents who, who rotate with us, you know, in older adults, 50 to 60 percent of dementing illnesses um, um, are Alzheimer's disease, but that means 40 or 50 percent are not, so you want to be accurate. You can flip a coin um, and be as accurate as just saying it's dementia, most likely Alzheimer's if it's a 74-year-old, but maybe you're not right. So uh, the thing is that a dementing illness is not normal. It's affecting function. So cognitive impairment that's not affecting function, mild cognitive impairment, may intersect with normalcy, but when it's starting to affect function, then this is not normal, and this requires our attention, hopefully even before we get to this stage. So again, in talking about the differential diagnosis of dementia, particularly in older adults, the majority of cases are Alzheimer's disease. Different, different studies show different statistics, 60%, 70%, 80%, depending on the age, and the uh, uh, background, socioeconomic and educational background of the population. But that still leaves a significant percentage, even if it's 
of people over the age of 65, 70 have cognitive impairment, dementia, that is Alzheimer's, that leaves 30% that aren't. And that's, that subset is what we're going to focus on today. That group that may have frontal temporal dementia, that group that may have Lewy body dementia, that group that may have the unusual forms of Alzheimer's that are inherited um, from uh, familial mutations, and vascular contributions to Alzheimer's disease as well as to vascular uh, dementia are, are going to be the focus of today's talks. Um, it's sometimes difficult and it takes time for these to manifest themselves, so hopefully as you leave here today you'll have a better understanding of these different illnesses and how they present in our aging population. So uh, to give a little bit of context, there are 50 million individuals worldwide with dementia. That's by World um, Health Organization. Um, 10 million new cases annually. This is an epidemic worldwide, and it is only going to grow. Um, close to 8 million Americans with dementia, again, of whom 5.5 million, some 60 to 70 percent, have Alzheimer's, with the majority of these being late onset after age 65. But a minority and a challenging minority are those who have their onset in early life um, before age 65. And I would point out to you that the case that Dr. Alzheimer's wrote about was a woman in her 50s. So she actually had pre-senile early onset dementia, uh, which I was told I would never see in practice. Um, how long, how w wrong people are when you're in training about what will come in your door when you're in practice. Um, there are about um, 800,000 cases of vascular or multi-infarct um, dementia about 300,000 with Lewy body and about 50 to 60,000 with frontal temporal dementia, of whom 60% of those have early onset or behave before age 65, so become challenging in that group. So this gives you a little bit of context for today's talks.